Lord God, we come to understand through, uh, through this story today that Jesus will appear to us in a number of distressing disguises in ways that we may not expect, that he identifies with the hurting, the hungry, the thirsty, the naked, identifies with them enough to even go to the cross. Lord, open our eyes to the part where, uh, of this story so that we can embrace the mystery of Christ's presence in our neighbor in need. We pray in his name. Amen. Les, could you bring me down just a little? I can kind of hear myself ringing back, and that's good. Thanks. So uh, in every church, there are stories that need to be told. Uh, there are stories that, that people need to know uh, and about ministry that doesn't get noticed. And I bear this as a particular burden as your pastor because I always have to tell myself that there are a lot of things that happen in the church that I know about that I assume you know about too. But sad to say, the reality is a lot of times you don't know about all the things that the church does in our community and in the world. And as a matter of fact, uh, this happens all the time. So when I, when I tell you a, a ministry story about celebration, I want you to understand, I am not bragging about our church. And I certainly am not putting myself forward as any sort of paragon of great faith. But I need you to know about the ministry that happens under the radars in your church because that ministry is your ministry, not just mine. You need to know the stories of ministry that happen because that ministry is yours and because those acts are the presence of Christ in our community, in our world. And here's one example. I bet you that not a single person in this congregation this morning knows what this is. This is a binder that resides in the pastor's office every day. And it's full of gift cards. So that if someone comes to the church and they need some food, we can give them a Coburn's gift card for $20. If someone comes to the church and they need gas, we can give them a gift card to Holiday. If they come and they say that their baby needs diapers, we can send them with a gift card to Walmart. And it's all in this little envelope right here, this little binder that resides in my office and in Pastor Elizabeth's office. Because sometimes people go through tough times, and you know what? It's amazing, you might be surprised, but a lot of times one of the first places people think to look for help is they think of the church. That's a good thing, right? I think that's a very good thing, that people out there in the world who may not even worship in a church still understand the church as generous and kind, still understand you as generous and kind. And this green book comes into play every single week in our ministry because God has blessed you and because you in turn have been generous so that we have the resources to help someone when they come to us with a need. God has blessed you. You are generous. It's just that simple. Now. It's not a lot. Our annual budget for general spending here at Celebration is $975,000 a year. The line item for pastoral care for these gift cards is $3,000. So we're not talking about a lot. Matter of fact, if you do the math, and I think I did it right, I'm not a math major, but that comes out to one-third of 1% 1 of our annual budget, 0.003% of our budget. Sometimes I'm sitting in my office and uh, right there against the window and I can see the person coming across the parking lot to come and ask for something they have a need. Last week, it came in the, in the form of a phone call. It was an elderly gentleman who introduced himself as a Vietnam vet from out of town who had come to go to the VA because he's suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. And his request was very simple. You know what he wanted? <coughs> Pants. His pants had ripped open. And he was going to his doctor's appointment and he wanted to look presentable when he got to the VA. The guy needed pants. So what's the church supposed to do in a situation like that? Get him pants. Right? Get the man some pants. Whether we're motivated by charity or love or patriotism, or service and uh, gratitude for service rendered for a veteran. But there are lots of reasons why we don't do random acts of kindness, aren't there? Sometimes we're too busy. So sometimes things cost money. Sometimes we don't trust people. Sometimes we fear we'll be taken advantage of if someone calls us and they have a need and we don't know that person. 
And believe me, that matters to me. If you're going to give your hard-earned dollar to God through the church, then it matters to me that we're good stewards of that money. I don't want to be taken advantage of. But what's the argument for buying the pants? What's the argument for going out of our way today or tomorrow or the next day for one small random act of kindness that, may never, uh, that might not ever come back to you? And here we have Matthew chapter 25. And at the end of Matthew's gospel, the stories that Jesus tells all have this unrelenting urgency to them. I don't know if you ever go back and read Matthew 25, but the parables are all about the urgency of understanding the presence of God. It's, it's the, the story uh, of the householder who will return at an unexpected time. And the next story is the story of the ten virgins who are encouraged to keep their, their lamps uh, trimmed and burning until the bridegroom returns, right? And right after that, the parable of the talents where a householder leaves and gives his servants some money and tells them to invest it and do well with it. And all of these parables lead to this forceful and deeply imagined scene at the end of all things. Jesus says, The Son of Man will come in his glory to judge the nations, and he will divide them like sheep from goats. And he will say, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger you invited me in. And to others, I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was naked and you gave me no clothing. And then with this incredible uh, uh, punchline at the end, when you did it to these, the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And if you did not, then you withheld that kindness from me. It's not a parable. It's an apocalyptic drama about the end of all things and, and the, the last word over all of history is held by Jesus himself, right? And the two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the adversary, have been entangled together, almost indistinguishable for all of history. And now our hero comes at the end to straighten it all out and to disclose all of it. Because it's all just been a tangled mess. And when he does, it's not about the purity of your doctrine. It's not about your belief system. It's not about whether you were a Lutheran or whether you were super faithful. It's not about golden streets and pearly gates. It's not about high honors and leadership skills. It's not about eloquence or knowledge. All, none of those things are mentioned at all. The only thing from Jesus at the end of this narrative is, I was a refugee with no place to lay my head. I was rejected and bruised and forsaken like every soul in prison. I, I identify with the outcast and the hungry and the naked to the point where I myself will go to the cross to be beaten and mocked and crucified. Jesus says, I stand deliberately with the powerless, the defenseless, and the tortured. And he will say at the end of time, did you recognize me? Did you know I was there? Or was there something else going on? Was it too inconvenient? Did you not trust was there something happened? Did you miss me? Then depart from me. That's so harsh. But it's not a story meant to scare you into being good. Neither is it a call to humanitarian work, but it is a call to live a life that is embedded in the love ethic of Jesus. It's a, it's a story called to live a life that's embedded in that ethic. And to see Christ's final word over all things as a warning about what really counts. Deeds of mercy. Small acts that reveal the kingdom done to those who are in need. The revelation that we could have uh, eyes that will see Christ in the least of these. Last few weeks we've been talking and praying about our Young Adults and Global Mission. Meg McClure is in Mexico. Uh, her parents are here today. My daughter Hannah is in Rwanda. And uh, through their training for Young Adults and Global Mission, uh, the ELCA, our national church body, said, we are investing resources in you, young adults, to become ministry leaders. And they told our daughters, when you go to that place, Mexico, Rwanda, we want you to blend in. We don't want you to come into this country as if somehow you are there to save everyone. Just blend, do your work, serve. Well, my daughter's 5'10". <laughs> big, long, brown hair, big brown eyes, right? So I was messaging her this week, and we were talking back and forth, and I said, how's that going? Are you blending in Rwanda? 
And she said, Dad, when we go to the market, the people follow us and they call out, Muzungu. I said, what does that mean? She said, it means money. I said, wow. And she said, that's, that's how they see us, Dad. Is that, that's how the world perceives you, American Christians. Is that who you really are? Someone who has resources? If that's who we really are, then we must be a church that is not afraid, but rather will embrace the mystery of Christ's presence in the water of baptism, in the meal at the Lord's table, and also Christ present in our neighbor in me. That's who we're called to be. And if that's who we're called to be, then we cannot step away from those opportunities to care for our neighbor in need. There is no reason, there is no way we cannot help send assistance to people who are, who are, whose lives have been destroyed by the hurricane. As I said in the greeting, 100% of those offerings that go in our mission of the month to uh, LDR go right to the people who are in need. Our main still today, our main picture is an actual NBC News picture of a family who's, uh, so, who was whose lives were devastated by Hurricane Harvey. I especially like the dog. Looks like a chihuahua or something. Here's a family walking along in that situation. So I get a phone call from a guy who needs pants. You know, usually when people need something from the church, they can come over and pick it up from me. A lot of times I don't even see them. I'll leave it out front and I may go somewhere else, but I'll say, I'll leave you money or I'll leave you a gift card for food. But this man, not only did he need pants, but he had no vehicle, so I had to go to him. It just so happened that I was going to Target that day, and it just so happened that we had a gift card in our green folder, enough for a pair of pants at Target, a gift card. So I told him I would meet him there, and I met him there, and I gave him a gift card, and while he was buying his pants, wouldn't you know it, I'm sitting in the coffee, uh, the little coffee place here in the front of Target, and a celebration member walks by. Hey, Pastor Jeff, what are you doing? I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> I said... There's a guy, he called me up, he's a Vietnam vet, he's, he's got his hat, Vietnam vet hat on, and he, and he needs a pair of pants. And we talked a little bit, and you know, so I said, this is not about me, this is about you. I'm doing ministry for all of us right now. I said, you're the one who gives, you're the one who's generous. I just happen to be the one right now who's going to help this guy. Uh, funny how things like that draw us in and, and get attached to us, as if we can actually begin to perceive that Christ is truly present. Because we talked for quite a while, this uh, celebration friend and I, and I sort of lost track of time, which I tend to do. And uh, I did not realize that the man had purchased his pants and had gone outside and was sitting on the bench in front of the target waiting for me. And uh, my friend from celebration finally left and walked out the door and saw him sitting there with his Vietnam vet hat on. And she said, oh, are you waiting for Pastor Jeff? Imagine how his mind was blown. <laughs> how, how does a, a complete stranger in front of target know that the name of the guy he's waiting for. And he said, yes. And she said, he's my pastor. We were just talking about you. He's right inside. And it was all about pants. Something so simple. God's blessings through your generosity to care for our neighbor in need, inspired by scripture, so that our eyes can be opened to the amazing experience of seeing Jesus in our neighbor in need. Pants. I got dozens of them. It's such a simple thing. And I know it's not perfect. You know that too, right? I mean, we probably give away a gift card now and then to someone who really doesn't need it. And for all I know, that guy could be going from town to town in the upper Midwest scamming pants from every pastor and church. Whoa. Yeah. I don't know. And that matters to me, like I said, because I want to be a good steward of what's been given but when I think about that for a little while, then I hear this other voice and it says, who cares? Get the guy some pants. When you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. And you did that celebration. So thank you. At the end of that day, I was still laughing about this and I kept saying it to myself and I was telling the staff, like, pants, it's such a hilarious thing, you know? And as we were walking out to our car, Aaron Dowzak, our our uh, director for family uh, ministry in junior high, middle school, uh, we were walking to our cars and he was walking to his a little ways off and I was walking to mine and I was like, pants, it's such a crazy thing. And I got all the way to my car and he goes, when did I see you naked and give you clothing? And we laughed. 
We had no idea this was our God story for this week. We had no idea. But we should have known God was up to something, right? Because stories like this of Jesus untangling it all at the end of time and having it all come down to pants has a way of sticking with the guy. Let's be that kind of church. The kind of church that sees Christ in our neighbor in need every day. Amen. Let's sing our hymn of the day.